the dynamic island on iPhone 14 Pro is so cool. But how's it work? And how do you interact with it? And what apps actually support it? Let's talk about it in this video. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here and I really like the iPhone 14 Pro. I've been using it for a few days and the dynamic island is too cool. It's this mixture of hardware and software that just puts Apple above so many other smartphone manufacturers that are out there. But it still has some questions that a lot of people have been asking. So I'm gonna break down exactly what the Dynamic Island is, how you can interact with it, and all of the apps and services that can show in this new form of UI that Apple has created. I wanna start by talking about what exactly the Dynamic Island is. Essentially, it's that pill-shaped black part on the top of the display on the iPhone 14 Pro or the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Apple essentially took the True Depth camera system that was located in the notch of the iPhone 13 Pro, reduced its footprint by about 30%, and transformed it into this pill, this island, that floats near the top of your display. But rather than just hiding the sensors and the camera in there, Apple transformed it into a fully dynamic part of your user experience. Now you'll see all sorts of things happening around that little island. Things like a call status, your AirPods connecting, and much more. Apple is able to blend that physical hardware, that black space on your screen with the software and the screen itself. Apple adds a black UI element around it to change the shape of that island, expanding to a square for Face ID, much larger when you're pulling up navigation routes, or shrinking it down to two different pills when you have multiple things going on. It is insanely cool to experience on these new devices. So how do you interact with it? So there's two real ways to interact with a dynamic island. Basically, a tap or a hold. If you tap on the dynamic island, it'll immediately jump you into any app that is represented on the dynamic island. So if you're listening to music and it's playing on that dynamic island, you tap it and it'll jump you right into the music app. If you're listening to Spotify, you tap on it, it'll jump you right into Spotify. The alternative is that long hold. So if you have something like Maps on the Dynamic Island and you want to see your upcoming turn, you just long hold on the Dynamic Island and it'll expand out, providing more information. You can do this whether you're, you're on a call, listening to music, navigating. All this stuff will expand the Dynamic Island instead of jumping you into that app. Personally, I think these interactions are backwards. I think it would make more sense to be able to tap the Dynamic Island to expand it and then long hold to like pop into the application, similar to how 3D Touch or Haptic Touch would work. You can just tap it to get a quick look or long press into it or hold onto it to actually jump into the app itself. That's how I prefer it would work, but I'm okay with how Apple has implemented it so far. Since we're talking about interacting with a dynamic island, it can also show multiple things at once. So typically so far, you'll see one thing up there in the dynamic island, but say you're recording a voice memo and you're navigating or you're playing music. That's possible. You'll actually see the pill split into two different bubbles. One main bubble that has the body of the pill and a second small circle. It works just as it would with one dynamic island. You can tap or long hold on either of them to interact with them. So what sorts of things will appear in this dynamic island? Before getting into that, I have to call out one of our sponsors, Adorama. Apple Insider followers can save literally hundreds of dollars on Apple products by applying code APINSIDER at checkout. But you must follow these steps to get these great deals. Use the link down below in the description or go to prices.appleinsider.com and follow any of the links on the Adorama column for the products that you're shopping for. Thanks again to Adorama for sponsoring this video. Now, Let's get back to our content. Let's look at some examples that Apple has provided. First are a couple different statuses. 
Anytime the camera is being used or the microphone is being used, you'll see two little dots appearing in the center of the dynamic island, giving you indication that those privacy features are being accessed. For example, if I open up FaceTime, I don't even get onto a FaceTime call, but because it's already accessed the camera, you can see a tiny little green dot appear in the dynamic island. Similarly, if I jump into an app like Voice Memos, when I go into Voice Memos, in this case, it's gonna be accessing the microphone. So if I start recording something, now you'll see a little orange dot up there in the dynamic island, letting me know that my microphone is currently active. There are several system alerts and notifications that will appear in the dynamic island. Here are some of the examples that Apple has provided. When your AirPods connect to your iPhone, when you unlock your phone via Face ID or you're setting up Face ID, when you're getting an incoming call, when you're using car key to unlock your vehicle, you receive a file via AirDrop, whether your phone is charging, whether your phone is in low battery mode, the silent switch is toggled on the side. You'll also get it if you have your watch unlocked, an NFC interaction is toggled, there is a shortcut happening, a focus change happens, airplane or no data alerts appear, or maybe you have an accessory connected to your iPhone. Third-party apps can tie in to the new Dynamic Island. So there are several third-party applications already available on the App Store that can show their UI elements up in the Dynamic Island. Spotify, Pandora, Stitcher, Amazon Music, Audible, NPR One, among many more will support the Dynamic Island. So as you're playing, you can see the icon up there of what you're playing, maybe mini album artwork of what you're playing up there, long hold onto it to pop it open and control that media, let go, make it go away, or tap it to jump in to that application. So far, at least four applications support call kit that work with Dynamic Island. Skype, WhatsApp, Instagram, and Google Voice will all appear inside of the Dynamic Island. Then we have what Apple calls live activities, things that are currently happening on your device that you need to be aware of. There's a bunch of different ones of these that you can try out. Being on a phone call, doing something over share play with somebody, music playing, a timer being recorded, voice memos, map directions, screen recordings, and your personal hotspot being enabled. Plus with iOS 16.1, Apple will be adding actual live activities APIs for third parties to tie in with more apps. Things like your Uber status up there, your Grubhub order up there, or the sports scores from whatever game it is that you're currently focused on. The Dynamic Island is still new. It's a brand new user interface feature that Apple has brought to the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max. I'm excited to see how it evolves and how Apple adds to it in the future, both through software and possible hardware changes for future iPhones. Let me know what you guys think. Are you as jazzed about the Dynamic Island as I am? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Otherwise, stay tuned because I have a lot more videos coming your way.